good morning. It's Tuesday, right? Yes, it's Tuesday. And turn that off. I'm heading, I'm gonna turn my headlights on because it's crappy today. I'm heading to the doctor. I think my blood pressure is sky high right now because I'm so nervous. Um, it's the ear, nose and throat doctor. So I'm going to have this ear checked. Um, it's still plugged, still can't hear out of it. Um, everything sounds like, I don't know how to describe it, but it sounds tinty, like, like I'm in a tin can in there or something. I don't know, I finally did tighten my phone holder. Um, so I'm so nervous. I don't know what, what, I don't know what she can do to get it unplugged. Um, when I was there a few weeks ago, she said the only way to get the fluid out of there is you can have a tube put in. So that's surgery. I don't want to have to have surgery. So, uh, let's see what she says. All my coats are slippery and my seatbelt always rides up and I cannot stand that. <coughs> so, my voice is finally coming back. Um, it's like it's like every day I'm just a little bit better every day, which is good. So um, <clears throat> I'm not coughing as much. <clears throat> I feel like I do have a lot of phlegm still. Um, I don't hardly blow my nose at all. Um, <clears throat> so now I'm going to start coughing because I um, said that. So, um, so I guess we'll see, but I'm so nervous. I am, uh, but anyway, um, all right, what do we have to talk about? I figure I'll talk on my ride out there and this will be my video for today because, so not last night, but the night before I woke up at three o'clock, I could not fall back asleep, just could not. So I got up. I just sat in the living room covered up with a blankie and just read stuff on my phone and um, I finally like fell asleep probably about 5.30 but then I woke up at 6.30 because I had to make, I was late on getting like lunches going and breakfast and stuff but I got it all done for the boys yesterday. Um, so last night uh, I went to bed kind of early and I slept all night and everything. I had a good night's sleep, so that's good. Um, well, I was going somewhere with that, with this. Oh, so, um, like during the day, there, there's like nothing on TV. So, um, I, I was, I watch TikTok a lot, and mostly in the evenings. And I, so I was watching it the one night over the weekend, and I saw that stuff on this, on that Alec Murdaugh and stuff, and I, I don't know why I don't remember that. <laughs> I don't remember any of that. I'm not sure why I don't. Usually I, you know, if it's a headliner thing, I remember it, but I don't. So I don't know what I was doing a few years ago. But, um, so I, of course there's like a thousand TikToks on it. So it was it, it, very interesting. So, and one of the TikToks that said, you know, you got, you got to watch the Netflix, Netflix documentary on it. I'm like, ooh, there's a document. So I was like, ooh, okay. So I did that over the weekend. I watched that. I think it's only three parts. And, um, wow. Let me tell you. I don't know. That was, wow. I don't know how people could be so awful. And, oh my gosh, it was just I could not get over that. So, but then on my Netflix and all these other documentaries pop up. I've always wanted to watch, but I, I, I've been kind of afraid to watch it. I don't know why I was afraid to watch it. Um, there's a documentary and it's called Evil Genius. And it's, it's my town. It's a lady from here um, that co-conspired with these other people from here. And I don't know if you've heard of the Pizza Bomber. Um, that's what it was like nicknamed and or named, I guess. It was nationwide. And um, it was about uh, this woman. And she, she got all these guys to do stuff for her. Hold on. And um, 
oh my gosh, she killed people. And it, it, I, remember, I remember this happening like it was yesterday because, weird story about this. It was August 28th, I think it was 2003. It was my nephew's birthday. And I believe we were going to his house, that my, my brother-in-law's house to, for cake and ice cream that night. So my mom and I were out and she had, she's always had her money at, at PNC Bank. So we were out, we were on Peach Street. That's our main like shopping district and stuff and Upper Peach. And so we were out and she's like, I gotta stop at PNC and get some money out. So we did. And then um, we went down, then we went down Peach Street to the, where our mall is at, and I had to go to Toys R Us because I was getting something for my nephew for his birthday that night. I, I think that's the year we, I got him, <laughs> we got him this thing you put on your bike, and it was like a police siren with lights, and because he was, he was in that stage, you know, and um, that's how, that's how I remember all this stuff. And I remember we came out of Toys R Us and I was like, oh my gosh, what is going on? There was like thousands of police cars. It was like one after another from every direction. Then all of a sudden they're closing Peach Street off and we were like, what the heck is going on? And you know, back then we probably had cell phones, but it wasn't like you could only, I think at that time you could only call on them. You couldn't like text or anything. It was one of, I think we were still in that stage. Cause I remember, I couldn't find any information out of what was going on until we watched the news, you know? And so we were done and we went home and when we watched the news, we saw what was going on and I was like, oh my God. So this woman, just briefly, I'll tell you just a little bit cause that's, you know, we were there. And so this woman had, they strapped this bomb on this guy, this pizza delivery guy. and they went, had him go on like this scavenger hunt and he was to rob the bank and he was supposed to get $250,000. Well, I don't even think he got 8,000. Of course he didn't get anything at, at the end, but, um, he was an innocent victim in the whole thing. And, um, he robbed the pansy bank we were just at. We missed all of that, like by a half hour. I said to my mom, Oh my gosh. But the people that set him up, staged themselves in our Eaton Park parking lot, which is right across the street from the bank. So I'm like, that they could have all been there at that time. Said it, you know, doing all this. And, oh my gosh. So I remember I was very freaked out by that because I'm like, oh my gosh, we were just at that bank. And then we left, we went down Peach and I, I remember I was, we weren't in Toys R Us long because I knew what I was getting my nephew and we come out and then all these cops and it was just like, Wow, I, I just don't under, I, I, we just, we were like, we were shocked that all this went on right after we were there. And um, so I remember all of that happening and it, and it was just, it was just a very weird and kind of scary time here because it was, it was a bizarre crime. And then, you know, so this, you know, the bomb went off on the guy and he died and then, um, a couple days later, a co-worker, his was found dead, another pizza delivery guy. And then it, it just, it was a string of people dying and oh my gosh. And the main, the main thing, I, and I'm glad I watched it because I, I thought I knew like everything about it because it was always in our news and stuff. But I didn't know this one thing and I'm going to give it away because I was like, I am still in shock over it. They, they could not they could not figure out how the pizza guy got involved in this thing. They wanted to believe he was an innocent bystander in it, but the people that were involved said, oh no, he was in on it. You know, he came to the pre-meeting the day before and all this other stuff. Well, there was this hooker, which I'm like, we have hookers here. <laughs> I'm so dumb. And um, <clears throat> they had found a list of hookers that this, this pizza man would call and stuff. He, he wasn't right. He was slower. He wasn't, he, he wasn't, you know, I mean, he was 30 some years old and he was a pizza delivery guy. He was just a slower human being. He was not, you know, I, I don't know what a proper term is for them, but he was just a slower person. 
Um, so he, um, so, you know, they had like this list of prostitutes and they, they got a hold of the one and, but she really wouldn't talk and wouldn't say anything and all this stuff. And, um, so, uh, finally, like this one, the guy that did the Netflix documentary, he really investigated he really did. I think it was, I think it's him that did it. I don't know. Whoever did it, the guy talking through the whole thing, he, he was like one of the best investigators on there. Um, the, the main FBI investigator went to school with my husband here. Um, and he, he became like famous for that because he helped figure the whole thing out because it was so bizarre. So, um, at the end of this documentary, this prostitute, she ended up in prison where this woman, the mastermind, the evil genius, um, was at and stuff, but it, it ended up, so she finally would talk to this guy and do an interview with him. So he came up here. I don't, he was from somewhere else, not in our town. And, um, he came up here and picked her up and, um, she's the one because everybody kept saying there's no way this this Brian Wells was in on this just no way and his family was just devastated and they were the same way they were like there's no way he was in on it um because it, I mean it was a twisted and evil evil thing and um so she reveals at the end that they were looking for somebody because she was sleeping with him and she was sleeping with this other guy that was involved and they were looking for somebody that they could set up to be the bank robber you know and they asked do you know anybody that's kind of like would be clueless and, and do it and she's the one that gave them this Brian Wells name and um said that he would do it because he he's you know he's slower and whatever and so she's the one. Oh my god, I was devastated. I was like, oh my god, you set him up. As far as I know, nothing, no charges or nothing has ever been filed against her for anything. And nobody's ever been, um, you know, no charges have been against anybody for his murder. Um, but I, I was just devastated because I was like, oh, like it was one of those things you did not expect. And you know, you live in this city and you've seen everything on it, on the news and stuff. And so I just, oh my God, my heart sank. I felt so bad. But then it gets, there's more. I was going to say it, get, it gets better, but not really, but maybe. She reveals that not long after the whole thing, she had a baby and it was Brian's. And, um... I was like, oh my gosh. So I wonder, like, the, and then they left you just hanging. That was the, and I'm like, well, I wonder, does his family see this child? You know, because they were so devastated at this whole thing and how he, it, it, they just, they couldn't imagine how he got involved and stuff. And so I just wonder, like, if they see that child, I don't know. Um, but the other thing, too, that was so sad. So it was this, it was a homemade bomb and they, they put it around his neck and it hung in front of him and then it went off. And, um, in order to get that off of him though, the, um, I don't, I don't know if it's a coroner, the coroner or the, um, I'm not sure the, or the autopsy person, which I don't know, is that the coroner? I don't know. They had to decapitate him to get it off. And the thing is, they wanted it off in one piece because they needed to try to figure out how this was made, who would have made something like this. And um, and his family was just devastated they did this. And, I mean, I would, you know, obviously I would be too. Um, but, oh my gosh, I, I you think you know the stuff that went on because I mean I, I I live here it's my town and I'm like holy cow I didn't know they had to decapitate him I did not I didn't know anything about prostitutes and and then oh my gosh what a bombshell but oh it was so good so if you would like to it's, I think it's um it's either three or five parts um but it's called Evil Genius and it's on Netflix it's very good
um, they show beautiful, beautiful um, areas of my town and stuff. <laughs> but how freaky is that though? That I'll never forget that day. I I remember everything about that day because when we got home, we were like, I, I remember calling my mom that night. I was like, oh my gosh, did you see on the news? She's like, yes. I'm like, we just missed that whole thing. Oh my gosh, crazy, crazy. But it, there's so much more to it than just that. It is, it is the most bizarre, bizarre thing. And like almost every character but two and the prostitute are dead. And they, they died of different things. And, um, oh my gosh. And the main woman, she's a weirdo, wacko. Oh my gosh. So if you get a chance to watch it, do it. It's very good. So then, what time is it? I gotta get in. Then I started watching, cause then of course all those documentaries pop up on there for you to watch. So the next one that was that Madeline McCain. And I'm like, oh, well, that's been in the news recently because of this girl from Poland and stuff. And I so want that to be her. But I don't know. You know, you never know. And I don't know if they're still going to go through with doing DNA because the parents came out and said stuff. But you can't believe the parents either. I would still say do the DNA just to make sure. Um, but my God, that's an eight part series. And I'm only I'm on part six now. Um but my gosh, all the twists and turns in that. I'm thinking, holy cow, I, I, how, I, you think like an abduction or, you know, like a crime is like cut and dry. This is what happened. This is how it went. Holy cow, no. And I don't know much about that one. I remember when it happened, um, but I didn't know much about it. So I've been watching that and I'm like, oh my gosh, now this, now this. And oh, so very interesting um so i want to finish that one i don't know if i'll get it finished today or not because um all right so i'm going into my doctor i'll let you know how i did did i tell you i forgot to weigh in i didn't finish that story either so i got up this morning got breakfast got lunches made i was starving this morning for some reason so i fixed myself breakfast right away ate it and then like a half hour later was like oh my god i never weighed in so I didn't want to weigh in after I ate. I don't know why I was so hungry this morning, but I was. Um, so I'm going to weigh in tomorrow. But I'm doing a full day of eating too. So I'll show you my breakfast, which was just two eggs and toast and some fruit. So, um, And then I'll show you my lunch, which is probably just going to be my salad. Although I really am in the mood for like a peanut butter sandwich or something. But I don't know. So, And then dinner tonight, we're having burgers and fries. Um, so, but I'll tell you about that later. So, wish me luck. Okay, I'm done. So, <clears throat> had to have another, like, pressure test and hearing test. And, um, it's improved. But, um, <clears throat> so, she says, oh, I got that too tight. She says it's just going to take time. She said the fluid is going it's down um but when they did the pressure test she said it's better but it's still um that's why i still can't hear and stuff so i don't understand all this stuff i wish i would just say whatever but anyway if it wasn't going to be to a number she wanted she was going to put a tube in right here in the office i was like you could do that right here which i would be happy with that so i wouldn't have to have surgery to have it done she goes yeah we would just numb you in put it in but it, it was at a number she liked but it's not where she wants it so she said let's give it some time and so what I have to do is she called in flow nase I don't usually ever do nostril stuff nasal stuff whatever and then I have to go get this whatever this is they have it at the store too um and she said that inflates like water into, or not water, air into your like nasal and, and, and stuff and it's supposed to help. So we'll see. So I'll have to stop at the drugstore at some point in time. Okay, lady, don't keep coming. I'm not turning. Mm -hmm. Do you hate when people do that? Just keep coming and coming and don't want to stop. Uh, so, so. Along with my story, 
of the documentaries I've been watching. Um, yesterday, right where I was at, at the doctor's office, just a block over, which is right where my husband and I take our buses to get fueled, some guy was shot, shot multiple times in his car. I was like, and we were going to go fuel our buses yesterday. And then, <clears throat> but it was supposed to be like rainy and, and stuff. And I said, ah, let's hold off till Wednesday because it's not supposed to be rainy on Wednesday. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad we did. I was like, I said to my husband this morning, did you see some guy was shot in his car <laughs> right where we would have been at that time yesterday? He's like, no. So, but they've been real hush hush about that. So I don't know what's going on there, but oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, so the other thing I'm doing today, which it's just 12 o'clock now. So that only took, I was in there a half hour or so, not too bad, but there was nobody there because I thought I forgot Wednesdays are kind of a good day to go there because her dad and the other, um, ENT doctor um, Wednesdays are surgery days so all she's the only one that has patients so I was there was a lady in a room already and then I came in and they put me in a room and I heard her get done with that lady and then she came over to me and then so pretty cool but anyway so that went fast sometimes like when I bring Roman there for his appointment sometimes we are there forever but oh well so now my next thing that I'm doing today is I am going to, I think the UPS store because my son, I can show you, he had calendars printed. I'll show you the first page. So these are a desk calendar. He had these printed for this year. They're all his pictures of his trains, the trains that we chase and stuff. He had a he had a hanging calendar done up, then he had these ones done up. Of course, you know, he did them through Walmart, which is fine. You know, he's just a kid. So we don't need to be anything fancy. So they contacted me and they're like, your, your calendars are done, but we don't have the coils to coil them. We're waiting for the coils. All right. Well, we're now the end of February, the last day of February. And I'm like, I call, I've been calling every couple weeks. I'm like, any coils in yet? No, no. So I went last week when I went shopping there, I said, I, just give them to me. I said, I'll figure it out. Well, I ordered coils off of Amazon, but they weren't big enough. Um, and then they didn't come with the, the stand-up part either. And I didn't even think to ask for them or anything. And so I called and they're like, oh yeah, we don't have those either. So I did get these off Amazon so that he can, you know, so they can stand up. They're a desk calendar. So I asked my friend last night, I'm like, where can I go to get like a calendar coiled? She said the UPS store. So I'm heading over there to see if they will coil these. He's only has 12 of them, but I want to get them done this week because first of all, <laughs> March is tomorrow. So two months of there, it's already gone. But, um, he has his train show this weekend and he has two tables at the train show and he sells his stuff there um he repairs like train engines and then he'll resell them like he'll buy them broken and and, and like he'll buy them that don't work for like a buck and then he'll he'll get them working so then he'll turn around and sell them for like 10 bucks so he's um the train show is sunday so <clears throat> he wants these calendars to sell there so he sold some of his he has a couple of these sold too that we got to get to the people and then he he sold his um the de the wall hanging ones he only has a couple of those left to sell at the train show but um he got tw i think he got 12 of both of them so um so i'm gonna see if i can get them coiled so that he can sell them and uh go from there but they came out really good and um so they have him and ray have the train show on sunday and i have our bingo game um uh, but ray's gonna leave him there and come over to help with bingo and then go back and get him um and he he's there with his friend alec that we train chase with he's got a table too so he'll be there with them too and um so and he spends more than he makes <laughs> he's always buying stuff 
That's the only time the kid ever spends any money is when he's at that train show. And it comes twice a year to our city. So um, it's actually held at the place where we had our, our raffle a few weeks ago at that ice skate, not ice skating, roller rink. So, so I'm heading up to the UPS store to see if I can do this. I pretty glad they will do it for me and I don't have to go anywhere else or try to... I, like I said, I got the I got some coils in from Amazon, but they they weren't it wasn't big enough. I got it coiled and everything. That I mean, it's easy to do, um, but it just wasn't big enough to flip it all the way. Um, I should have got like a size bigger or something. So, but I didn't because I didn't know exactly what I was doing. And um, so, anyway, so I'm doing that. So I'll show you that if I get them. If they do get if they can get it for me and then what else is going on it's been pretty quiet um, I don't know so I'm just glad that your point I don't have to go back unless she says I the hearing still doesn't come back and so hopefully my hearing will come back it, it's it's better, but like I said, it, it sounds like I'm in a tin box in there, and I'm like, where it's really bad for me is church. Oh my goodness, when the priest is talking, cause we have a huge church, so it's like you know, tall ceilings and everything. So I, I sit there and I'm like, and everybody will start laughing. I'm like, what do you say? What do you say? Where he's like, oh my god. I'm like, I know. I said it's terrible can't hear but it is better I know that so and and that the pressure test machine said it's better but she said it's not totally good though and um but I did tell her I said well I probably should tell you my family has a history of hearing problems I said I have three sisters that wear hearing aids I said my son sees your dad multiple times a year and has had multiple surgeries and um, so I said, I'm kind of one of the lone survivors in my family of no hearing problems. And I said, I don't want that to start now. I said, I've come so far. So she said, no, it should be okay. And so just have to give it time and do this nasal stuff now. <sighs> so much fun. But other than that... Um, I, I haven't been able to find anything like I watch YouTube but um, I've been really caught up with everybody <laughs> I like to when I'm home all day I have the TV on either the TV on in the living room or if in my craft room doing something I'll have my computer on because I can get my TV my cable on there and I, I always just need something on in the background and so that's when I play all my YouTube videos and stuff. But like I haven't had, I'm, I'm so caught up with everybody. Um, so that's why I started watching all these documentaries. <laughs> Which documentaries kind of scare me a little bit, but I don't know. So. Uh, I'm trying to think what lane I need to be in this lane. There's something else I was going to share with you. Oh, I did my sewing. When did I sew? Was it Saturday because the boys went down to Pittsburgh train watching or train chasing and they were my husband texted me he's like I'm looking across the river here and I'm looking at West Virginia that's how far down they were I was like damn you're really far down he said yeah three hour ride home I'm like uh but they actually made good time they were home before 10 o'clock at night so and they left at 6 30 in the morning so I did laundry and I um I did one sewing project. I got my curtains done for my craft room and I absolutely love them. And then um, I just, I, I need to get with my husband before I can do the ones for the shelves I want to do downstairs because I'm not sure what I'm putting them on. I, I, I don't want to, like I have the one set of shelves we have that are like what I call our office stuff is, um, is velcroed on. I do want to velcro because I want to be able to slide the curtains open. So I would like to put like a piece of PVC or something. So I need to have him like measure it for me and <clears throat> figure that out first. So we just have to have time to do that, which 
was going to do between Sunday and yesterday, but our furnace stopped running on Sunday and my husband's like, I was sitting down there on the computer. I'm thinking, he goes, you know, when you keep hearing a strange noise and you don't really pay attention, then all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, what is that? It was our furnace trying to turn on. He wasn't sure if it was the fan or the press pressure switch. So he, yesterday he went and got a pressure switch and he changed that out last night and that's what it was. So he had bypassed it on Sunday so that it would work. And then um, yesterday he got the switch and changed it out and sure enough it worked. So he said, it's not the fan, it's the switch. So he was doing one at a time to see which one it would be. And that's what it ended up being. So, so here is the UPS store. Oh, I don't know why I'm turning down the volume on my radio. I don't need to do that. <laughs> oh, habits. So <clears throat> I'm going to go in here and see if I have any success with this. And I'll let you know. So I'll be back. Okay, they have the coils. And I could just do it myself. So that is what I'm doing. Take it home. Do it myself. All right. Oh, darn it. The back of my car. I hit the button and I shut it, but it didn't shut all the way. Don't you hate that? Well, I'm just going to drive with it halfway open. It's not halfway open. It's just not shut all the way. So... I think I'll, I'll go over to the drugstore pharmacy, pick up my Flonase and this thing. Um, she said, just ask them for it, they have it. So I will do that. Um, I'm trying to think what else I needed to share. I always have all these things. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll have to share that with her. Then I forget. Um, <laughs> I am not going to bingo tonight. So I, um, I told my sister, I said, um, I am giving up bingo for Lent. So I'm just going to stay home. Oh, uh, and I'll be honest with you. It was, it's been kind of nice just staying home and not, not running down to the club and stuff. Um, oh, I do have news about that. So I went down yesterday because I, I do the memberships and stuff. So I went down and did up the memberships that were there. And um, so I didn't work. I told I said I wasn't going to work. Um, but the girl in charge of the kitchen, she's like, how are you feeling? I'm like, I'm, I finally feel like I made a good turn like Friday. Like Friday, Saturday. I started really feeling much better um like I, like I said I'm not blowing my nose anymore and um I'm hardly coughing at all and so I said better I said I, I feel like I'm back to myself and stuff I said just my ear kind of bothers me it doesn't there's no pain but I said it's like um like everything sounds tinty and it's it's kind of like like annoying but she's like any chance you could work on the Fridays she's like it was so crazy without you, and I, she didn't get anybody to replace me. So she said, any chance you could work? And I said, yeah. I said, I can work. I'm, I'm fine. So I start Friday. So I'm going to work that job just the next, I think it's only six Fridays left. So I will do that. But I'm going to go down at about 1230 because she said she had gotten absolutely slammed at lunchtime. Um... Friday so I said okay I said I'll come down and and do that so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go down and help um, so that'll be all right and then we have at church tomorrow every Wednesday now of Lent actually I think it's just the Wednesdays in March I don't think we're doing it because I think isn't the first weekend or the first week in April was Holy Week I think but we're only doing it in March. Um, and it's every other week. So, well, it's every week, but every other week at our church. So we are doing, we call them simple suppers. Oh, hold on, someone's calling me.
Okay, I'm finally home. So my phone call that I got in the car lasted forever. <laughs> it was one of our, uh, it's one of our guys that does the potato pancakes for our festival. Somebody must be walking by. So, so he wanted to chat. <coughs> um, and then I had to call my husband. So I finally got in, got my prescription because they close, I think, from like 1 30 to 2 30 every day. So I got that. It's like a flow naze. Two sprays in both nostrils every day. Okay, there's that. Then I got this. <laughs> How does it work? Oh, it has a battery and a motor. So it's gonna blow, um, this is supposed to blow air up and try to get that fluid that's, it's right here, <laughs> get that to, to move. People use this like when they fly and stuff like that. I've never heard of it before, but, so I got that to do. I don't know how many times a day I'm supposed to do this though. Oh, it's when, oh. Why not to use it? Hmm. It's used for treating negative middle ear pressure, which is what I have. So, um, but I don't know how many times it's supposed to, I'm supposed to do it a day. Oh, wait. Okay. I think just once. It's an ear pressure relief device. I never knew such a thing existed. Isn't that funny how stuff like this, does it have a charger cord? No, has a little, has a little baggie. <laughs> how cute is that? So it, it is battery operated. So that'll be interesting. Alrighty, so we have that. Um, okay, so I'm going to put, I'm going to put this stuff aside and do my, do my son's calendars up because I want to get those done and off my desk here. Um, let me move my planner out of the way. I still have my sewing machine, but you can see my curtains. They came out so, so cute. The other one is up here. So cute. I love that print. And it just, to me, it just makes it look so, so nice in here. So, I'm so very happy with it. So, um, I'd like to get these all done and out of my way. It's, did I tell you it's 1.30? I gotta eat sometime too. I'm just having my salad. Look how, sorry, all this noise, but look how big these coils are. Did he give me now? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Look how big they are. <laughs> These are way bigger than one, uh, the ones I ordered off at Amazon. So that's why they didn't work for me before. <laughs> so I'm going to do those. And then I'll show you my lunch, which is most likely going to be my salad. And um, I'll show you dinner, which is going to be um, ham, uh, probably cheeseburgers, actually. We'll do cheeseburgers tonight. Um, you better make sure they're in calendar, um, month order. I, I should show you it. I, I think he did such a nice job. That's his cover. These photos are so nice. He's standing on a bridge, obviously. He, these are like his favorite engines. This is when they go to Gowanda. That's what they chase up there. And this is in like Lima, Ohio. This is not far from that whole train derailment that everybody's all worked up about. This is the Titusville train um, in Titusville, Pennsylvania. I don't remember where that one was at. Isn't that a nice shot? <laughs> I thought that was really nice. He, he does take some really good pictures. This one was um, 
the Rio Grande. That was in Solon, Ohio. And then, of course, I told you those are his favorites, so he's got them in there twice. And that, again, is the Lima, Ohio one. And then there's the one we chased in November down in Reading, Pennsylvania. Obviously, he made that November. And then these are just BNSFs. I'm not sure where those are at, though, but... A lot of times his pictures, what he goes for is like these old signals and stuff. Because a lot of these get replaced and taken down. So they're, um, you know, so that's what the boys like is getting shots with these old signals and stuff. So, so that's that. Um, this one is a favorite too. We chase this one a lot. <laughs> this one comes up here locally. So, but anyway, all right. So I'm going to put these together. I'll show you one when it's done. And then, um, I don't know what else I'm going to do. I'm going to change my shirt, eat, um, and I don't know what else I have. I don't think I have anything on my, I think it was just my doctor appointment today. I wanted to make sure. Yeah. Yep. So that's it. So I'm free the rest of the day. I'm sure I'll find something. So I'll be back.